Violent of Freddy's 1 has been dissected so many times, but considering how much you guys loved my Ultimate Custom Night video where I analysed all the entire game, I figured that I would make a video similar to that, but with a game that I understand way more. And before you comment, yes, I've seen Techfall's videos, there's more to talk about, trust me. So in this video, I will be explaining in detail everything you need to know about the original Violent to Freddy's game. So let's get started. So for starters, let's explain the office layout and general rules of Final Fantasy Freddy's 1. Final Fantasy Freddy's 1 takes place in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, where your goal is to survive from 12am to 6am, while four animatronic mascots try to kill you. But fear not, you have an office with two lights and two doors and a camera system to defend yourself. But don't overuse anything, as you only have so much power. Now that the basics are done, let's get into the specifics. Nights last for 8 minutes and 55 seconds. 12am lasts for 1 minute and 30 seconds, while the other hours from 1am to 6am last 1 minute and 29 seconds each hour. The power will always drain no matter what you do. The amount that gets drained depends on the night in question, as each night makes the power drain faster. On night 1, 1% of power will drain every 9.6 seconds. On night 2, 1% of power will drain every 6 seconds. On night 3, 1% of power will drain every 5 seconds. On night 4, 1% of power will drain every 4 seconds. And on night 5 and onward, 1% of power will drain every 3 seconds. This is just how much power will drain if you don't touch anything, however. As we know, if you can't just sit in the office and do nothing the entire night. So, how much power drains if you use the cams on the door? You can see how much power is being used by looking at the usage bar, which can have either one bar which is always there, that's the natural power drain, and it can go up to four bars. Well actually technically this number can go up to five if you have a light on when you enter cams, but it's only for one second. Turning on the hall lights, closing the doors, and checking on the monitor will cut the time it takes for power to drain in half for each one turned on. So on night one, 1% 1 each 4.8 seconds with two bars, an average of 1% each 3.2 seconds in a cycle of 2.8 seconds, 2.9 seconds, and 3.9 seconds with three bars, and an average of 1% for each 2.4 seconds in a cycle of 1.9 seconds, 2.9 seconds with four bars. However, this is just the numbers for night one, so you can imagine how on night five with four bars you die by 2 a.m. Technically, you only have about 16.6% power each hour to use, so going over that will probably result in a game over, although it doesn't count the end of night timer, so you might be safe. These are the power percentages you should aim for when playing to avoid death. 12am, obviously you'll start with 99%. By 1am, you should have about 83%. By 2am, you should have 66%. By 3am, you should have at least 50%. By 4am, you should have about 33%. By 5am you should have about 16% and obviously by 6am it doesn't really matter how much power you have. Oh yeah, so the reason you technically can still play the game at 0% power is because the value rounds to the nearest integer, which is why when you start the night it, you start at 99%. Just a little add-on. Now very quickly I'll explain how all the cameras, doors and lights work. Starting off with the cameras, you have 11, technically 14 positions an animatronic can be at, although not all animatronics can go to all positions. I'll explain when we get to the animatronics. So the 11 positions are the show stage, backstage, dining area, restrooms, kitchen, pirate cove, west hall, supply closet, west hall corner, east hall, and east hall corner. The other three positions are the two door positions and your office. When an animatronic is at your door, you can see them with your hall lights. The only two animatronics who use these positions are Bonnie and Chica. The office position obviously is where you are dead. Some other things to note. The kitchen camera doesn't have a video feed, but plays audio based on which character is in there. Chica plays a pots and pans sound which is in there, and Freddy plays his Toyodor March theme. Both of these sounds are audible from the office. The doors and lights are pretty simple. The light just illuminates the light position and will show if a character is there. And if there is, it'll play the singer and show the character. The doors pretty much just block out any of the characters from entering, obviously. Now, one more thing tonight. Because when an animatronic is at your door, it counts as a possible movement position, if an animatronic fails what we call movement opportunities while they're at the door, they won't leave. So sometimes you can get unlucky and have characters just stay at your door for most of the night. So just something to keep in mind, which I'll explain in just a second. Anyways, I'll explain how power outages work at the end of the video. For now, let's talk about all four animatronics and how they work. However, I better explain how the AI of all the characters work, since they all pretty much work the same way. Every couple of seconds, the character will get what we like to call a movement opportunity. When this opportunity occurs, the game will generate a random number between 1 and 20, and compare that number to the character's current AI level. If this number is less than or equal to the animatronic's current AI level, then they will be allowed to move. For example, let's say Bonnie's AI level is 5. Every time it gets a movement opportunity, the game will roll a number between 1 and 20, and if the number is something like the number 3, 3 is less than 5, so Bonnie will be allowed to move. But if the number is something like 17, 17 is not less than 5, so Bonnie will not move. Basically the numbers are like percentages. 
AI level 1 is a 1 in 20 chance to move, AI level 10 is a 50% chance to move, and AI level 20 gives the character a 100% chance to move at every single movement opportunity. I'll explain what AI levels all the characters are at for each night as we go through. So let's start by going through every single character in this game and how they all work. Bonnie is the first animatronic that you deal with of the four. Bonnie gets a movement opportunity every 4.97 seconds, and these are his AI levels for each night. Night 1, he has an AI level of 0. Night 2, he has an AI level of 3. Night 3, he has an AI level of 0. Night 4, he has an AI level of 2. Night 5, he has an AI level of 10. And Night 6, he has an AI level of 10. Now obviously, AI level 0 means that the animatronic cannot move, but Bonnie's AI level actually increases throughout the night. At 2am, 3am and 4am, Bonnie's AI level increases by 1 for each hour. Meaning by the end of night 1, Bonnie has an AI level of 3. Bonnie can move from the show stage to the dining area or the backstage. From there he can move to the west hall and either then the supply closet or the west hall corner. He can also go from the west hall corner to the supply closet. He can move to your door from either the west hall corner or the supply closet, although it should be noted that Bonnie always has a chance to move back to the west hall. Once at your door, he will attempt to get in on his next movement opportunity. If blocked by the left door, he will go back into the dining area. If successful, he will jam the left door and wait for you to lower your camera the next time you enter. If you don't lower the camera after 30 seconds, he jump scares you anyway. Bonnie is the only character who can be in the backstage and the supply closet as well as sharp at the left door position. Chica is most likely the next character you will encounter. Chica gets a movement opportunity every 4.98 seconds and these are her AI levels for each night. Night 1, she has an AI level of 0. Night 2, she has an AI level of 1. Night 3, she has an AI level of 5. Night 4, she has an AI level of 4. Night 5, she has an AI level of 7. And Night 6, she has an AI level of 12. At 3am and 4am, Chica's AI level increases by 1 for each hour. Chica can move from the show stage to the dining area and to the restrooms. She can then move to the kitchen where she will play the pots and pans sound which can be heard even from the office. She will then enter the east hall and then the east hall corner where she will attempt to get into your office on her next movement opportunity like Bonnie. She behaves the same as Bonnie as she gets in. Also, both Bonnie and Chica make moaning sounds if your camera is up, but they are in the office ready to kill you. Foxy is one of the more unique characters of the bunch. Foxy gets a movement opportunity every 5.01 seconds, and these are his AI levels for each night. Night 1, he has an AI level of 0. Night 2, he has an AI level of 1. Night 3, he has an AI level of 2. Night 4, he has an AI level of 6. Night 5, he has an AI level of 5. And Night 6, he has an AI level of 16. Quite a jump there. Like Chica, Foxy gains an extra 1 AI level at 3am and 4am, meaning that on night 6, Foxy is only 2 points away from his max aggression. Now Foxy behaves a lot differently from Bonnie and Chica. He starts off in the pirate cove and every successful movement opportunity advances him one stage out of the cove. Once he makes it fully out, he will dash to your left door when you either check the west hall or after about 25 seconds has passed. When Foxy hits your door, he takes away a certain percentage of power depending on how many times he has hit your door already. The first time he hits your door, he drains 1% of power, and this amount increases by 5% for every time he hits your door. The second time is 6%, third is 11%, fourth is 16%, and so on. So if you don't keep Foxy locked down, he will cause your power to drain very quickly. So how do you deal with Foxy? Well, anytime you use the cameras, Foxy goes into a locked state where regardless of any movement opportunities that occur, Foxy is unable to move. You also don't have to be looking at Foxy directly for this to work. And when you leave the camera, Foxy doesn't immediately start moving again. The amount of time it takes for Foxy to unfreeze is between 0.83 seconds and 16.67 seconds. Foxy's attack can be stalled if the power goes out before he finishes his jump scare. Foxy's jump scare is actually quite glitchy, sometimes not rendering in properly as shown in this clip here. Need your camera, you just know where Oh crap, Foxy's oh. running. Dang! I didn't know Fo Foxy is the only character who can kill you without you needing to lift the camera at all. So if his AI level is set to zero, you don't even need to enter the cameras at all. Also, I should note that Foxy is actually active on night one, and he can attack and kill you. But he has an AI level of 2 by 4am, so it's not a high chance. Freddy is the final main threat of the gang, and is easily the most complicated. Freddy gets a movement opportunity every 3.02 seconds, and here are his AI levels for each night. Nights 1 and 2, he has an AI level of 0. Night 3, he has an AI level of 1. Night 4, he has an AI level of either 1 or 2, with a 50% chance for it to be each one. Night 5, he has an AI level of 3. And Night 6, he has an AI level of 4. Obviously, you can see why he's so difficult on AI level 20, since the highest he gets to up to normal gameplay is 4. Also, Freddy never gets an AI increase throughout the night. So how Freddy works? Every successful movement opportunity, Freddy moves one space closer to your office. He has a really strict path starting on the show stage, then moving to the dining area, then the restrooms, then the kitchen where you can hear his song, 
the East Hall, and then finally the East Hall corner. Every time he moves, you can hear his laugh sound effect. Now, Freddy's movements are a bit strange. Every time he gets a successful movement opportunity, he starts a countdown, which can be described as 1000 minus 100 X frames, X being Freddy's current AR level. For example, at AR level 1, it would take him 900 frames for Freddy to be able to move. Also, something to note is that past AR level 10, this number is 0 frames, meaning technically AR level 10 is just as difficult as 20. However, obviously he still uses the same 0 to 20 number system, so he still has to succeed in the movement opportunity. Now, something to note is that Freddy can be stalled the same way as Foxy, although you do have to be looking at his camera directly. However, if he has already had a successful movement opportunity and his countdown has started, looking at him won't stall his countdown. And the second that this countdown ends and you look at a different camera or lower the monitor, Freddy will take his movement. Basically, you can't stop Freddy, you can only delay him. The way that Freddy's attacks work is also very different. Looking at Cam 4B will lock Freddy from being able to enter the office at all. In other words, this is the first ever instance of camera stalling. Check out my video on Ultimate Custodite to learn more. However, the second you look at a camera that isn't his, he will attempt an attack. If blocked by the door, he will retreat to the East Hall and try to get back into the corner from another attack. If the door is open, Freddy will enter the office and he will wait for you to lower the camera. Freddy will never force the camera down himself, so you could hide in the camera for the rest of the night to avoid him, although this probably wouldn't work because everyone else is also going to be present. If you're not in the cams, Freddy has a 25% chance to attack every second. Obviously, it should be noted that if Freddy hasn't succeeded in a movement opportunity while in his attack phase, he can't do anything. Freddy is easily the hardest character to deal with out of everyone. Oh yeah, Freddy kills you if the power runs out. This sequence is super simple. Once the power runs out, all normal gameplay is cancelled. It's all about timers now. There's three phases to the blackout phase. In phase one, every five seconds, there's a 20% chance to progress to the second stage. However, after 20 seconds, phase two just activates immediately, where Freddy shows up at the left door playing his Toriador March song. Phase two has the same chance of 20% every five seconds to advance, otherwise we go straight to the third final phase. In this phase, 20 has a 20% chance to kill you every two seconds. And when it succeeds, you know, yeah, you die. Something interesting to note is that if you activate Golden Freddy before the power goes out, Golden Freddy can kill you in the blackout phase. Now, Golden Freddy is obviously really simple. While no one can agree on exactly what the chance of him appearing is, the agreed upon stat is that he has a 1 in 100,000 chance to spawn in every second. Although you don't actually have to check the poster for him to be spawned in, but if you don't check the poster, he can't spawn into your office. From there, you either flip the monitor up to avoid him or stare at him, experience a jump scare, and then have your game crash. Golden Freddy has two other appearances. If you type 1987 into the custom night, Golden Freddy jump scares you. Also, every time you game over, there's a 0.0001% chance for the game to take you to the Golden Freddy jump scare. Pretty cool. Now for the Easter eggs, they pretty much work the same as the Golden Freddy system. A Bonnie Rare death screen and Freddy death screen has a 1 in 1000 chance of occurring every single time that you die. Any camera Easter egg has a 1 in 100 chance of occurring every second. The Foxy Humming and Circus Pipe Organ both have a 1 in 30 chance to happen every second. And finally, the random door panel that you hear has a 1 in 50 chance of happening every second. And that is everything you need to know about how everything works in the original Fire to Freddy's. I really like making these videos, and if you want to see more like this, let me know in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.